and we saw some cars yesterday make contact with the wall and when they did they immediately got tire up so it's very very dangerous to put your car there right now with 248 laps to go well it was something to prove kyle larson in this 42 car not only has he had a tremendous year but fell out at Kansas with that engine failure. He's failed to finish the last four races. Jeff, you said it's time for him to turn the end of this season around, and what better track to do it? Remember, last year, he led 132 laps, ended up finishing second to the eventual champion, Jimmy Johnson, who only led the final three. And every year in the elimination format to determine the champion, it has been the eventual champion who's won the race, but the possibility exists. That may change today. Kyle Larson out in front. Parker. And guys, are we surprised at the line that Kyle Larson's running right up next to that wall? Speaking to his crew chief, Chad Johnson, I asked him about that. He said, you know, I wish he would run just a little bit off of it, maybe three to four feet off it to just at the beginning to protect that race car. But he told me we did some special things on the right side of that race car for when he does get in the wall, knowing he's going to run up that next to it. We've done some things with the crush panels and to stop those fenders from being able to get into those tires. And I found that pretty interesting that they've done that. Literally inches off the wall. Kyle Larson trying to finish out the 2017 season on a positive note as he's out front. Brad Keselowski leading the championship four. Let's listen into spotter communication from the 42 team. 11 and 48 are the only other ones as high as you right now. About a lane and a half off the wall through one and two right now consistently and about a half a lane off the wall through three and four. Still not all the way up to it. That was spotter coverage presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance helping drivers worry less. Yeah, just great information of what other people are doing. Obviously, they know what they're doing and where he wants to put his race car. And no surprise to everyone on the field. You heard Kevin Harvick say, hey, you know where he's going to be running. But... Just a little bit of information. You see a problem with the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Martin Truex Jr. trying to hang on. He knows that a caution is coming up because the end of stage one is very close. Kyle Larson right up against the wall. Larson trying to finish on a high note as the last five races have been terrible for the 42 team. But he gets the checkered flag with a nine second advantage over second place. Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Mark Trix Jr., the championship four contenders, all finishing right behind Larson. Coming into the restart zone. Green flag back in the air to start stage two. How aggressive will the 18 of Kyle Busch be right on the back bumper of Brad Keselowski? Great restart for Brad Kozlowski trying to steal the lead away from the 42 of Kyle Larson. And that was a power move by the 42 of Kyle Larson. He just drove right around the outside of Brad Kozlowski. He's less than a half a second away from him now. And Harvick has stuck to his guns as far as running the bottom of the racetrack until he sees the 42 of Kyle Larson go down to the bottom of the racetrack. So Kevin Harvick decides that a higher line is a better way to go. Yeah, if you just follow him to the bottom of the racetrack, all the air comes off your car. So aerodynamically, the car does not make the grip. So Kevin has changed his line accordingly. Larson right up against the wall through three and four. Harvick about two thirds of the way up the racetrack through three and four. It's happened before the last three years. The championship contender has gone on to win the race to win the title. It's taken a win of the race to win the championship. And now Kevin Harvick trying to get out front of the field here at Homestead, Miami. This is a perfect example of what Kevin Harvick talked about. He's not willing to go up right next to the wall yet. He doesn't feel he'll need to be there when the sun goes down. So. Two differencing of opinions right here. You have the 42 right against the wall in three and four where Kevin Harvick runs a little bit lower. This end of the racetrack, Jeff, it seems like against the wall isn't quite as advantageous. They're a little bit lower down the racetrack. Well, the track's cooled off on this end of the racetrack. It's shaded now.
the different lines working for each driver at different ends of the racetrack. Larson taking advantage of right up against the wall in three and four. And then Kevin Harvick taking advantage of right at the white line through one and two. So Harvick, Kyle Busch, Truex Jr., and Keselowski, that's the way the championship four are running. Let's get an update on some of the younger drivers. We start with Parker. The 42 of Kyle Larson has led the most laps this race, doing exactly what you see him doing there, running that high lane right up against the wall. But as that four started to catch him early in this run, his team was letting him know that the four where it was running, and he kind of moved this lane down, trying to block a little bit. But once he got clear of the four and started to drive away, he went right back to the wall. The moment to try to win a race or the moment to try to win a championship. And in the end, I think that's how the superstars on pit road set themselves apart is not only can they do fast pit stops, Rick, but they can do fast pit stops when the biggest moment is on the line. Really the same for race car drivers. There's a lot of race car drivers that can drive fast laps, Rick, but fast laps versus trying to win a race, much different. And green flag pit stops are starting now. I saw Joey Logano make his way onto pit road. A couple more cars have Taking the hard left turn and gone on to pit road. One of those being the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Kyle Larson, race leader on pit road. Parker. Hey guys, this can be Ford Goodyear tires and adjustment in the right rear for Kyle Larson. You see a little bit of fire there under the brakes, maybe some rubber down there on the right front. He's also a little too loose on exit, Kelly. Very difficult to see, to see in this restart zone, but also you're going to have a 10 lap shootout. We're going to find out who has a great car on a short run. Field just going through the Geico restart zone. Into the shade and into turn one. Kyle Larson. Chosen the outside line. Look who else is making the outside line work. Truex Jr. slides up to second. They go through the speedy dry. That's what you're seeing come off of these cars. Harvick trying to fight back on the inside. Kyle Larson has a seven tenth of a second lead, looking to sweep the stages. As he comes out of turn four, the checkered flag once again as Kyle Larson wins stage two. And the 42 
working the high line trying to go by Kevin Harvick Harvick still stuck to that white line. Well there's never an advantage not to be in the championship for that's every driver's goal. But if there was ever a sliver it's right here for Kyle Larson. He says it's time. Look at him. He's not leaving any room between himself and the outside wall trying to catch these leaders Kelly. And once again Kevin Harvick saying that that four car is just a little bit too tight. Here's what Rodney Childers told him. I think you're doing the right thing there. Most of them have been too tight. have been a lot better up top. I need to be on the bottom but I can't turn to make the bottom. And then his spotter 10 feet away came back and said hey look it we're still in the game. We'll get this right for the end of the race. And that's the question the end of the race. So history would say that this race normally has a short run. The last run in the last three races have been less than seven laps. So when we talk about Kyle Busch being good on the long run, is that how the race will end? Or will we see the normal shootout, which has been kind of the standard for these championship races? And we know how important tires are. So we know if it's within 10 laps or more, every team's going to come to pit road. That puts so much pressure on the pit crew, making sure that they get those cars back out on the track at least in the position they came on and maybe gaining some spots from pit road. The 42 of Kyle Larson still right against the wall making a move on Martin Truex Junior. Trying to take second away as Kyle Larson uses that momentum coming off a of turn four and now up to second. Now he'll try to chase down Kyle Busch. And how much do drivers like Martin Truex Junior and Kyle Busch even worry about Kyle Larson because the bigger picture is the championship that's looming out there. Marty. Rick, I can answer that question. Cole Pern just said on the radio, run our race. So obviously not too worried about the 42. Same handling issues for the 78. Tight in the center, loose on exit. But you got to wonder with the sun coming down if that's going to help them out. There is one other issue, though. Radio problems. Take a listen. Whose damn radio is that? I don't know. I'm not sure at all. I can't figure it out. We're trying. On with me. As long as I, gotta, I can quit hearing that damn noise. So what they did is they switched to channel one on the radio which they never use on the 78 team but Jeff as a driver that can be awfully distracting when there's interference on your radio. And remember in practice when the 78 car Martin Truex went to the wall put his car directly against it. It wasn't long before he hit it and when he hit it they had a lot of damage. You can see Kyle Larson may have just touched it a little bit. Larson trying that fast line around Homestead Miami. What's Kyle Busch going to do now though is he going to defend the 42 or let the 42 go to try to continue to attack the 78 because the 42 as he comes into the picture into the wall a little bit but still carrying momentum. Huge momentum for Kyle Larson as now he's moved up into third and he's going to be a factor in this race. Could he be a factor in the championship. We've Kyle Larson how, staying right up against the wall. And we see how difficult it is to pass on this racetrack. I think that's going to be the key. Can Kyle Busch get to him at the right time? And what is the impact of Kyle Larson? Kyle Larson has the fastest car on the racetrack. Will he separate these two? How will he affect the top two right now running for a championship? Now 12 laps to go. And the 42 he talked about it. He could just get to Miami. He thought he could win this race win a championship has had a DNF in the last four races. I think he could care less about these front two racing for a championship. He's trying to win a race at Miami. And Kyle's got to put his race car where it's the fastest. He's got to not worry about Kyle Larson. He's got not to not really even worry. It sounds crazy about Truex. It's about lap time. What's the fastest way around this racetrack to close this gap? Fight for a championship between the 78 and the 18. Kyle Larson trying to finish on a high note by just winning the Careful. race. Good job by Martin Truex. Right a little better. Good job by Martin Truex Jr. getting up to the wall, finding a way to get his car a little bit quicker. Is this a respect move out of Kyle Larson right now? He was the fastest car. Is he laying back saying, you know what? I don't want to affect this championship. I am surprised he hasn't been able to get to the bumper of the 18. It's a difficult spot for Kyle Larson to be in. You don't want to be part of this championship story. You want to win the race, but you don't want to be the reason someone lost the race or lost the championship. The 42 of Larson staying in check back in third. Now all the way to the bottom of the track for Kyle Busch. Will this move work? He's thrown everything he has at, Kyle, at Martin Truex Jr. right now and he's just going to have to do something different. 
the things that he wants to do are not working. So you can see he's down to the bottom of the racetrack. Trying to get the nose of the 18 close enough to the 78 to challenge him for the lead. Three laps of racing to go. And again, the 18 dives to the bottom of the track. Now lap traffic coming into play. Here comes the 42, using that momentum on the high side. Now, Kyle Larson gets to the back bumper of the 18. So much adversity the 78 team has gone through as we see the 42 into the wall. Putting an exclamation point on a near perfect season. Mark Truex Jr. is the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series champion. Oh.